Comments and views expressed on the Miracles on the Street show are the views of those who make them and not necessarily reflect the views of Terry Young, Miracles on the Street, or any of its affiliates or sponsors. That may be a fact. That may be a fact. You pray for the Lord to take him. Take him, Lord. Take him, Lord. Just let him stop breathing. He can't stand the way he eats, sleeps, chews cereal. Take him, Jesus. Okay, maybe that's okay. But the truth is, what God has joined together, when you tap into truth, the facts become subject to you. Jesus became truth, and the more truth you have, the less limit you have. The greater. Now, God only exchanges one thing for truth. He only wants one thing, and it's your worship. John chapter 4, verse 24 says, God is spirit. Not a spirit. A and thou are indefinite articles in which the Greek do not appear. A and thou don't appear in the Greek. God is not a spirit. He is spirit. Yeah. If he's a, he's one of many. He's not one of many. He's the spirit that all spirits flow out of. Yeah. Yes. God is spirit. Yes. And those that worship yes. must worship in spirit. spirit. And in truth. Yes. Worship leads you into the spirit where you discover truth. Yeah. Yes. Worship is an exchange between the worshiper and the worshipee. Yes. It's an intimate exchange where God gives his power, truth, and authority to men and women who've heard yes. other things. And now he wipes away the old thinking, believing, and gives him truth that gives him power over the resources of the earth, just like God had resources in heaven. God wants you to rule the earth the way God rules the heaven. You were made to rule down here the way God rules there. Some people want to leave, I don't want to leave. Some people can't wait to be raptured, I'm not waiting to be raptured. I'm waiting to get the keys of the kingdom and take by force everything the devil stole. I'm a part of an ecclesia, a church. Now, now the word church doesn't appear in your Bible. It's been translated, misinterpreted to be called out ones, called out ones, and not proper. Ecclesia is the ones who are summoned to be senators. That's right. That's right. You are senators. You are not a, back, a gathering or an assembly. Ecclesia is the word senators. You are called to speak for regions. You see, senators speak in our country for the state. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever the Senate says is what the state says. Yeah. See, God doesn't look at the condition of the masses. He looks at the ecclesia. Amen. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from the wicked, praise. then would I hear, forgive Amen. their, Amen. and heal their. The condition of the land is not up to the world. It's not up to the present. It's never been. God never cursed Adam. He cursed the ground. So the curse is the ground for your sake. The ground was cursed. God never cursed Adam. He cursed the ground. So the ground is cursed. Now the ground you were made to rule, you will be a slave to. Mm -hmm. God took Adam from the dust of the ground. The dust. Mm -hmm. Say dust. 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 Say dust. dust. The Hebrew word for dust is mud. Mm -hmm. wow. God cannot work with dry earth. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor. I can tell. I can tell. You need a little water. You need a little water. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a little dusty. <laughs> it's going to be just mud. Just mud. Before God took man out of the dust of the ground, the Bible says a mist came out of the earth and watered the face of the earth. Yes. The word face is pawneum, the before of time. Yes. Before time was, the mist came and watered the history. The Spirit of God moved on the face of the deep. The face of the deep is not just waters. It's a place where the, the word, one word is actually the seed of the earth. It's translated semen. The generations, the Holy Spirit moved over the seeds that were in the earth. And God said, let there be light. He divided the light from the darkness, saw the light was good, and he blessed it. You see, the Word of God divides the light from the darkness. Yes. 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 What does the Word of God do? It divides. What does it do? Divides. What from what? Light and darkness. That's what the Word of God does. What does a sword do? A sword cuts in half. Mm -hmm. yeah. When the Word of God is in your mouth, you act like God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you start dividing the will of God from the will of the enemy. Yes. 
Yes. You see, a word, a so word of God is a sword. A purpose of a sword is to divide. Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is sharp and powerful, mm -hmm. dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Yeah. What does the word do? It divides. When you speak God's word, you act like your divine nature, and you now divide the will of the enemy over the will of, from, from the will of God. Yeah. You divide blessing from curse. You divide yes. sickness from life. You divide the old from the new. You see, you were made to operate, to talk, to walk, to be like God. Yes. Divide the light from the earth. Deity those that are called to walk as little G gods in the earth are created to yes. speak the things the way God speaks things then. Amen. Amen. See, God got That's real it. mad at Moses. He got so mad, he said, y'all, you ain't going in the promised land. Mm -hmm. He got so mad. Yes. You're going to see the promise, but you're not going to enter. That's right. mm -hmm. The people needed water. Up to six million people needed water. Uh -huh. Bible says first time they needed water, he commanded him, take your staff, take your gift, take the thing you've leaned on for 80 years. You, spoke, you use this staff to speak to the ocean. You use this staff to strike the ocean. Whatever you did, you did with this staff for 80 years. Mm -hmm. Take your staff and strike the rock. Yep. Okay. And then water came out. Yes. Next time they needed water, God said, don't strike the, don't strike the rock again. That's right. Who's the rock? Jesus. Jesus. What we're doing now is still striking the rock. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. The old system is still striking the rock. Uh -oh. God said, I don't want you to strike it again. I want you to speak to it. Wow. Here's a problem, Moses. Moses can't talk. I'm slow of speech. I stutter. God's strength will always be in your weakness, not your strength. Where you're weak, then are you strong? God will give you strength where you feel the weakest. In weakness, my strength is made perfect. I can't talk. I can't talk. So he gets uncomfortable and he strikes the rock again. God says, okay, you've done this. You will see the promise, but you will not enter. He says a funny thing. You have failed to glorify me in the people's eyes. God can only get glory when, when his, his creation talks like he talks. Amen. When the sons of God now start talking to things Amen. and the things obey us the way it obey. He says, now I can get glory. Hallelujah. You want to give God glory? Start acting like God acts. Amen. Start healing the sick, raising the dead. Yeah. Let your light shine before men that they may see your God good works and glorify your... Yes. They came to Jesus. They said, Jesus, good master. He said, there's none good but God alone. Mm. Good and God are the same thing. Let your light shine before men that they may see your God works and glorify your Father. You've got to start talking to oceans and talking to trees and talking to money and talking to family. Just start speaking to things in the earth the way God speaks to things. And divide the light from the darkness. And God says you were made to walk and talk and to think like I think and to operate like I operate. But God wants us to discover the treasure that's in us. Colossians 1.27 says Christ is... In you, the hope of glory. He's hidden His glory inside of us. And the discover yeah. of truth is a discover of what we've been carrying this whole time. Yeah. You see, men only use about 10% of their brain. <laughs> Got a new movie coming out of somebody who's going to be able to use this in this little movie. They give them drugs and they're able to do all these supernatural things. Well, that is the reality of heaven. God hid his treasure inside of man. Man was made to operate in the earth the way God operates in the heavens. When he partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he became a slave to the ground who was made to rule. And the first Adam partook of the beast nature. And now he lived by the sweat of his brow. The sweat of his brow. And a sign of the curse that would be on his brow, on his thinking. Yes. On his thinking. Mm. Wow. On his mind would be that the earth would produce thorns and Thistles. thorns and Thistles. Jesus died and they hung him high and they stretched him wide. They put a crown of thorns on his head. Yeah. To symbolize the breaking of the curse that was on the ground. Yeah. That's right. This is why Jesus could talk to plants and plants would obey him. That's right. This is why Jesus could talk to oceans and oceans would obey him. This is why Jesus talked to arms and arms had to obey him. This is why Jesus talked to, to bread and bread had to obey him. See, the miracle of the fish and the loaves wasn't the fishes and the loaves. The miracle of the fish and the loaves that he got out of the desert, preached for three days, he took a little boy's lunch, and the Bible says he blessed it. But before he blessed it and multiplied it, he commanded them to sit in the grass. Mm. He got out in a desert, and he commanded them to sit down in the grass. Okay. Let me help you. There's no grass in deserts. <laughs> the power of the word changed the desert into a paradise. Right. The power of the word can cultivate environments. That's right. The miracle of the fish and the loaves wasn't the fish and the loaves. The miracle of the fish and the loaves was that God was able to release the power of the word through Christ and create an, uh, uh, an atmosphere and shift the eco structure of a cursed ground into a blessed ground. And before he was done preaching, it looked like a paradise. Hallelujah. Wow. And provision follows those who discover truth. Jesus became truth. 
And so the, the, the sweat of his brow, you see, when God took man from the dust of the ground, the Bible says he breathed in his nostrils. The word nostril is not these things. It is his face. He breathed on him face to face. <clears throat> and he put inside of him what he was. Only God is good enough and bad enough to recreate himself. God took dust. What kind of dust? Mud. God can't work. Even God can't work with dry earth. Oh, come on. Come on. Okay? Come on. Took the dry earth, cultivated, created the dry earth. The Bible says the mist came out of the before of time. Before time was. He took the dry earth. The Bible says he breathed into the face. The word, its face. He breathed on his face. And now he became a living soul. Only God could breathe himself into substance again. Only God is bad enough to breathe himself into dirt and look at a little mini me. Amen. Yeah. Talking. Oh, yeah, we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> What's that, Adam? Giraffe. Good Adam. Good Adam. What's that lion? Good Adam. Whatever he called it, that was his. God ordained Adam to have the whole earth. But before he qualified for the whole earth, he was confined to the garden. Uh -oh. Before you ever get your whole earth, you must be faithful with your garden. Yeah. Hey. In the Old Testament, God put Adam in the garden. In the New Testament, the garden is in your heart. Yeah. 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 Come on now. Come on. You are cultivating in your heart. You are creating in your heart. What are you creating in your heart? What's in your heart? And that's why most people don't want the church to have the keys of the kingdom. They are afraid of what's in men's hearts. But God said, in a, in a season, I'm going to give new hearts to my people. Yeah. And when hearts are stone, I will turn into flesh. And I will be to them a God, and they will be to me a people. And you will not say, put my laws on paper. No, I will write my laws on their hearts. And you will not say, know the Lord. All will know the Lord. There will be no big I, no little you. It will be an army of men and women who discover who God is and are walking in supernatural power, changing the earth to look like heaven. And before we leave, we will kick back the gates of hell. The gates of hell will not prevail. We will go into every dark place, every barren place, every so every place that the devil sent his keys that he's occupied for thousands of years illegally will be overtaken by men and women with power, with authority, and by force they will take back the whatever the devil stole. That is the school system, that is the medical arena, that is the government arena, that is the ghetto, that is the highway, that is the Bible, that is the places of war. God will bring a people, according to Job chapter number 2, who, who walk in his power. Yes. The Bible says a people that there's never been alike and there will never be any after. Touch your neighbor and say, you are blessed. Yes. He's sitting next to me. There's never been a person like me ever before. And there will never be another or machine guns, the weapon of this armor will be the presence of God. The Bible says a fire will be before them and a flame behind them. And everywhere they go, the glory of God will cause men and women to fall on their faces. The Bible says these men will fall on the sword and the sword won't hurt them. That's right. It's been found in Joel. That's right. Bullets are going to bounce off these people. Yes. All right. Yes, Mom. Holy Ghost headlock. That's exactly right. They will appear and disappear. Oh, right. they, won't, they won't use airplanes anymore. Jesus, after his resurrection, didn't he didn't walk anywhere anymore. He just caught light. Woo! That's right. Well, that's Jesus. Great. Yeah, so did Philip. Philip caught light. Amen. Baptized a eunuch with 70 miles somewhere else in a moment. Why? Because God is a God of no limits and no bounds. Right. And before you discover him, you discover yourself. You see, worship is a discovery of God. And in discovering God, you discover who you are. Yes. And as you know who you are, the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this Amen. world. As yeah. he is, so are we. As he is, so are we. What is he? I am. What I am, he is. See, the church has always had a problem with oneness. Come on, come on. Bring it out. Come on now. Jesus said, I and my father are. One. The religious about ripped their clothes off, and they couldn't pick up enough stones fast enough. When you start saying you and your father are one, people are going to get mad at you. Who you think you are? You just don't. I know, I know who I am in my flesh, but because apart from him, I can do nothing. But in him, I can do all things. He said, for this purpose, for this purpose, will the, will, will, for this purpose, will a man leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife, and the two shall become one bone of Bones. flesh of flesh. You see, in the garden, God put men to sleep and took the bride out of the side. Yes. Mm -hmm. On the tree, the Bible says that God put the bride back into, the, into yes. Christ. Mm -hmm. In the garden, God took the bride out of the side. Yep. On the cross, God put the bride back into Christ. Yes. Yes. Amen. 
Bible says they came to break the legs of Jesus and the legs were, and he was already dead. So they pierced him in the side and out came blood and water. You are born again by the blood and the water of the word. You are born again and, and what was taken out of you, uh, what was taken out of Adam in the garden was put back into Christ. At the cross. That's right. He said, for this purpose will a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. The Bible says that Jesus cried with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have they forsaken me? He left his father. He looked at his mama and said, mama, here's your son. Son, here's your mama. He left his mama to be one with the bride. That's right. Amen. Now bone of, bone. flesh of, flesh. the two shall become one. one. The two shall become one. He that is joined to Christ is one spirit with him. Yes. Amen. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead has come to live in us. Not a different spirit, not a mini spirit. The same. And the power of our discovery of truth causes the only place the devil has left is lies. Yes. His only dominion area is lies in the hearts of men. And he will call men what they are. The word devil is the word diabolos. It is accuser. It is tempter, accuser, and slanderer. He will tempt us. And after we, we fail, he will accuse us. Mm -hmm. And after he accuses us, he will call us what we are not. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is one accuser of the brethren. And his job is to stand in opposite of Jesus. The Bible says Jesus yeah. ever lives to make intercession for the saints. Hallelujah. He is in the heavenly realm speaking yeah. on your behalf. Yeah. Telling you, telling God how great you are, how wonderful yeah. you are, how wonderful you're going to be. He died for your greatness. Yeah. He died for your glory. He died for you to walk in power. He's telling you. And there's one accuser of the brethren standing there saying how bad we are and how much we don't deserve it. But the blood of Jesus speaks greater than that of any, anything of Abel. He's speaking greater things than that of the old covenant. He is speaking your glory, your glory. Why? Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. Real sin is to live beneath our glory. Glory. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Ooh, come on now. How sinful is it for yeah. Superman to never put on his cape? Uh oh. Yeah. And people are dying. Yeah. The glory of Superman, of Clark Kent and Superman. And the sin would be that he never discovers his true identity. And he lives life like a slave when he was made to be ruler of all. Yes. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 says, The heir, as long as he's a child, is no different than a slave, even though he is Lord of all. Oh. Oh. It's talking about you. Yeah. Uh -oh. When you are in Christ, you are joint, you are heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus. Yeah. You're not an heir of Oprah. You're not an heir of Bill Gates. No you're an heir of God. Right. What does God have? Everything. What do you have? Everything. We just don't know it. So we live like slaves, bound to time, space, and matter. Uh -oh. God Come says, on. no, 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 no. Go there. Ga Galatians says, the rudiments of the law, the rudiments of traditions of men are to keep you bound to the elements of the age. Mm -hmm. When you get into traditions of men, the law, the seed of the serpent, I don't know if I have time to talk about it, but the, the seed of the serpent would bruise the heel of the body. Right. The seed of the serpent would bruise the heel. Gal Genesis 3.15 says the seed of the, of the snake, the snake is that which lives in the low places. Gen Genesis 3 says that, that the, the snake lives and he would consume the dust of the earth. What does the snake consume? Dust. What does he consume? Dust. He lives on his belly and consumes? Dust. Dust. What is man made of? Dust. As long as man lives in his flesh, the devil has a legal right to devour us. You can cast him out as long as you want. You can put as much oil on you so you look like a grease pig at a county fair. He's not going anywhere. If you keep feeding him. If you don't like cats, stop putting milk out. The more we feed him, the bigger he's going to get. And somebody is feeding him. How do we know? In the book of Genesis, he's a snake. In the book of Revelation, he's a dragon. Uh -oh. Whoa. Somebody's feeding him. Wow. Somebody's feeding him. So he, you live, and what does he live? On his belly, the dust, the low places. As long as we live in the low places, you weren't made for the low places. You were made to be seated in heavenly places in Christ, at the right hand of the majesty on high. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high. Where's the secret place? In the most high. You know what most high means? There's no higher. <laughs> Worship takes you to the highest place in existence. Right. Yeah. Yes. Above every principality, power, spiritual yeah. wickedness. Yeah. Yeah. See, we do not pray and prophesy and cast out demons until we come out of the secret place. That's right. That's right. Come on. You don't speak up to devils. You're supposed to speak down to them. Yeah. Yeah. When you live in the secret place of the most high, 
the highest place in existence is the secret yes. place. You yes. dwell in the shadow of the all-powerful God. The power yes. of God is accessible to those who live in the secret place. Yes. When you operate in the secret place, everything comes under the dominion of God in you. Yes. Uh -huh. Bible says, now the seed of the serpent would bruise the heel of the woman, and the seed of the woman would crush the head. Amen. The seed of the serpent would bruise the heel. The seed of the woman would crush the head. There would be enmity. Say enmity. enmity. Say enmity. enmity. The seed of the serpent is the snake DNA. The snake DNA is what shows up in Jesus' time. That resists Jesus and Jesus calls them snakes and vipers. vipers. Who are they called? They're the Pharisees, the Sadducees. The teachers of the law. <laughs> Those that have knowledge of Bible, but no revelation and no power. They have the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. There are those that drink of the old wine, and when the new comes, say the old is better. They are the old wineskin who will not discover new things. New wineskins keep stretching, keep expanding. Old wineskins say, I've got that already, don't teach me. Not me, Holy Spirit, don't teach me. I've got this already. The seed, now, vipers carry something very dangerous in their blood. It's venom. Venom does what? Kills. How does it kill you? Paralyze. Paralyzes you. How does it paralyze you? It gets in your blood and it disconnects the signals of light from the head to the body. Come on now. When a snake bites you, he injects your bloodstream with venom. And now the venom that was in the mouth of the snake is in your blood. And now the signal from the head to the body can't get there. Uh-oh. The leaven of the Pharisee has, called, has been called to cut the ear off the bride. Mm. See, Peter, in his haste, cut the ear off the servant of the high priest. Mm -hmm. Come on. Who's our high priest? Jesus. After the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Hebrews tells us that. The religious church has cut the ear off the church. Come on, yes. But Jesus is going to take his hand and put the ear back on the church yeah. so that he that has an right. ear, let him hear. So the snake bites and injects the bloodstream with venom. And the purpose of the venom is to disconnect the head from the body. Yeah. Wow. And they don't go in, and those that were going in, they hinder. Come on. They never go in, and they hinder those that were going. Come on but now. the Bible says there would rise up a seed of the woman yeah. who would crush the head yeah, of the yeah. snake. Hallelujah. Who would crush the head of the viper. Yes. Who would crush the head of the doctrines of mm. devils that are yeah. in yeah. men's yeah. mouth. Yeah. You see, on the last day, there will be two types of people. The sheep and the goat, the wheat and the tail. Yeah. Yes. You can't discern them, I can discern them. Only the angels can separate mm. who they are. Yeah. But these creatures are more like preachers that come out of the bottomless pit. Or in the Revelation. And they have bodies of animals, but men's faces. And they have a stink. And it doesn't kill you, but it paralyzes you. Come on. The bottomless pit is the church who has rejected the apostle and the prophet. A lot of pastors, a lot of teachers, a lot of evangelists. Apostles, prophet, I don't know about that. You're a little funny if you call yourself that. There are no real apostles and prophets. Happen to be a fake if there's a real. Happen to be a real twenty dollar bill if. Happen to be a fake twenty dollar bill if there's a real one. There is an authentic apostle and prophet in the last day, and that's who worked with the apostle, apostolic, not a doctrine, not a theology, but the apostle and the prophet. Who are going to rise up. The Bible calls them the foundation. Yes. The foundation. We are built upon the apostles, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Apostles, prophets. The bottomless church is a church with no apostles and prophets. Come on. Come on. Yeah. The That's right. Apostles are set for order, for direction. They go first. They go ahead and establish. Apostles is more clearly translated missionary. Hmm. They're sent first hmm. into regions. Hmm. See, if you're not apostolic and you go into a region, you will be devoured. That's oh. right. You have to, the word apostolic means sent one. Right. You're sent in with order to establish and to open heavens. And after the apostle comes the prophet. The prophet is the seer, the voice, the visionary. And when there's no apostle and prophet in denominations or demon nations, it will create foundationless churches. 
and out of them come creatures or preachers who sting the people and make the, the church yeah, dull of on. hearing. Because in the last day there will be a famine of the hearing of the word. Not of bread and water, but of the hearing. A lot of people on television, but not a lot of word. A lot of sermons being preached every Sunday, but not a lot of word. And there was a famine in the land for the hearing of the word. So God wants the people to discover what was before. And if you can discover what was before, you are not bound by time, space, or matter. That's right. What's impossible? Nothing. That's right. What can stop the church? Nothing. What limit did God give you? He said, anything you ask in my name, he will do it. That the Father would be glorified. Yeah. And the children. I looked up the word anything. You want to know what it means? Anything. That's a blank check to the universe. God of the universe wrote you a blank check. And the only thing that you need to cast a check is to verify your identity. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Come on now. My name. Your identity has to be verified yes. before the funds will be released to you. That's right. And God has a heavenly fund that is fat with interest. That's right. It is fat with interest. That's it. Because he's been waiting for us to withdraw our heavenly account. That's right. Which God says everything is there. Money, signs, wonders, truth, wisdom, revelation, power, of authority. It is all in this realm. And God wants us to draw. And God wants us to discover the truth of who we are. But our identity has to be verified. So that as heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus, those of you that have a joint account, know that everything that goes in that account is as, as much yours as mine. Because we're joint heirs. You have a co-access to whatever God has. Well, I want to tell you, you have access to whatever God has and whatever God is. Amen. Amen. God is looking to verify your identity. And it's impossible to verify your identity until you discover who he is. This is the power of your worship. Worship is not praise and thanksgiving. That's right. Outer court, thanksgiving. Yes. Inner court, praise. And it was gates with thanksgiving. And it was courts with praise. The third dimension only comes through worship. That's right. Come on. Psalms 90, he that dwells in the secret place. Yeah. Outer court, you see, God told Moses to build the tabernacle after the pattern in heaven. Paul in, in Corinthians 12 tells us that he was caught to what heaven? Third. Third. Which one? Third. Third. How many heavens are there? Three. 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 Three levels. Three dimensions. We're all going to the same place. No, we're not. <laughs> I just want to get there. No, you don't. <laughs> I just want to miss hell. No, you don't. Why would God say to store for yourself treasure in heaven mm -hmm. if we all get the same reward? Mm -hmm. Some of us are just going to make it by the skin of our teeth. That's right. That's right. Some of us are headed there loaded. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, I'm loaded. I'm loaded. Spiritually. Spiritually. And naturally. Yeah. I'm leaving here poor. Oh. Why would he say to store up treasure in heaven where moth and dust does grow up? You see, there's one thing in God, in heaven, that God keeps under lock and key. And it's not cars. <laughs> you don't have this big screen locked up. Oh, Lord, that's a good plasma. <laughs> you don't have his jewelry locked up. He clothes that arena with our treasure. Yes. He uses the best thing in this world for construction material. Yes. Construction material, you say it, Pastor. That's what God does. Amen. So our treasure here isn't his treasure there. No. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions, rooms, doors. He said, I am the door. He said, I will give you the key. What is a door and a key? Allude to a lock. Yes. What is the lock designed to do? To keep people out yes. and to only let certain people in. Yeah. Specific access. The Word of God is designed to be a stumbling block to many. Yes. Right. It's designed to keep you out. Mm -hmm. Unless you have the right motive and the pure heart. That's oh, right. Oh, you, you don't believe me? He said, they said, they said, why are you talking in parables? <laughs> parables are mysteries, stories that are hidden. <laughs> hidden stories, hidden mysteries. He said, I'll tell you later. The thousands heard the parables. Yes. He said, for you, it's given to know the mysteries That's of the right. kingdom. Yes. But to those who are without, it's not given. That's right. Guess what? The job of the Holy Spirit is to block people from understanding yeah, that's right. the treasure of this. Come on. That's the job. Come on. Well, well, the Holy Spirit's after anybody. No, we're after anybody. Yeah. We're desperate for members. 
<laughs> Jesus was very, de very deliberate on who he discipled. Come on, he qualified for discipleship. Oh, come on. oh, come on in. We want everybody. Okay, that's us. <laughs> Let the dead bury the dead. Get to the Come on. Can I walk with you, Jesus? Go sell all you have and give it to the poor. Come on. Oh, he walked away sad. <laughs> Jesus was very deliberate. Because yeah. what he was handing out was the treasure of the universe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want everybody in our church. Jesus, I know I don't need everybody in my church. I just need twelve. Yeah. And even one of them was the devil. Was a devil. Come on. Come on now. He changed the world with twelve. Because the treasure of the mystery is not given for many. Straight is the gate. And narrow is the way that leads yes. to life is not heaven. That gate is the gate of all access. That yes. you will go in and out and find pasture. That's right. The gate where you have keys in the kingdom that whatever you pray in the earth happens from heaven. Yes. That's right. Imagine a generation that God says, I approve so much that I've built this ecclesia. Yes. And now I don't look to the nation, I look toward the people. I look toward the Senate. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. You, are you are privileged, privileged to be sitting next to a senator. <laughs> I knew I'd be somebody. I knew Mark was right. I'd be somebody. I'd be somebody. You are the spokesman for your region. That's right. God does not. He never looked to the masses. He never, ever. Genesis 18. God got ready to wipe out Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't look to Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, "How can I do this until I talk to my ecclesia, my friend?" And so Abraham said, "Let's make a deal with God." Come on. Can I get 50 righteous, Lord? Can I get 50? No, I'm like, I get 50. How about 40 righteous? Okay, 40. How about 30? 30. 20? 20. 10? 10. Stop that 10. If we would have gotten to one or two or five or under with Lot there, there would still be, there would still be a Sodom and Gomorrah to this day. That's right. Because God doesn't judge the, the nation based on the nation. Yep. He judges the nations based on the ecclesia. That's right. The senators. How can I do this? God does nothing in the land except he first reveal it to his prophets. The ecclesia. Need another one? Okay, there's another one. The Bible says God got ready to bless Israel with the land of Cana, flown with milk and honey. The twelve disciples went in. Say twelve. Twelve. Say twelve. Twelve. Say twelve spies. Twelve. twelve. Say twelve. Twelve. How many tribes are there? Twelve. Twelve senators. Spokesmen. Ten gave an evil report. Two gave a good report. Why didn't God just wipe out the ten and get another ten? And let's go ahead and get in. Because the ten spoke for the tribe. The ecclesia is the one that gives a voice for the region. Yes. Mm, that's good. One more. Exodus 32, 33. That's right. It says God got ready to wipe out Israel. They're stiff-necked, disobedient, they're rebellious. He says, your people, Moses. Wait a minute, I thought they were your people, Lord. He's like, oh, that's kind of funny. So here's what we're going to do, Moses. I'm going to wipe them all out. I'm going to start a new nation with you. What do you say, Moses? Amen. No. <laughs> no. If you would have said amen, oh, would have been wiped out. <laughs> Didn't say amen. Amen. No way. Lord, these are your people amen. who you brought out. Yes. And a little speck of dust stood in between God judging the whole nation. That's right. Ecclesia. That's right. The ecclesia, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, avails much. What avails much means makes tremendous power available. Yes. Your prayers have power. That's right. You can play my Get ready to. To pray. We want to pray. We want to grieve. We don't want to be too long with you here. But we know that there is a discovery of another dimension Amen. that is about to hit the people of God that are hungry for more. Amen. You see, most of us have been hungry and thirsty. And it's felt like we've been in a place of wandering. God told me to watch the life of David and Saul. He said, watch it. He said, David's are about to be promoted and Saul's are about to be demoted. Uh -oh. mm. David's are about to take the palace. See, the purpose of the palace is for influence. Yeah. 
to magnify your influence over nations. Did you know when God looks at you, he doesn't see you, he sees a nation? Yes, correct. He said, I looked at Abraham and inside of him, all I could see was sand and stars. Hallelujah. Inside of you as nations. And when God sees you, he doesn't see you. He sees nations. That's why the devil's fighting you. That's why you're under the warfare you're under. That's why you're under the attack. We may only have 50. We only have a couple hundred people in our church. And why are we fighting this demonic force? Because the devil is not fighting us for where we are. He's fighting us for where we're headed. That's right. We're carrying something. We're carrying someone. We're carrying a glory in us that is going to invade the earth. And God said, I'm about to demote Saul and I'm about to promote David. You see, David was anointed to be king. Yeah. And the immediate verse after his anointing, the Bible says an evil spirit from hell, an evil spirit from God, the Lord, the Lord came to trouble Saul. Oh, that's right. You see, the anointed had now lifted to govern the nation from Saul to David. And now, for over 15 years, Saul is occupying an office he's no longer anointed for. Uh -oh. And when you occupy an office you're no longer anointed for, you are now subject to demonic oppression. Yes. Uh -oh. wow. Come on now. And the only time the devil would leave, the only time, is yes, when David would worship, yes, but also when Saul would submit to the governmental authority that was on David. Yes. Uh -oh. so David had the anointing for king. Yes. Come on. And there was room. God told me this. There's room in God's house for Saul. Yeah. He said, some Saul's I'm going to have to take out of here. Yeah. Come on. Because they'll never repent. That's right. Uh -oh. There are some Saul's that will repent. Yes. Most of them will. When they see and they hear, they're going to repent. It's going to be hard for them. It's going to be new. It's going to be weird. But it's going to be God saying there's still room because God always designed David for Saul's glory, not to take the glory. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because Saul could be transgenerational. Yes. Yes. You want to know why? Because see, when David, when the new king came in, his job was to kill the bloodline of the old king. He had to wipe out the bloodline. But David had a covenant with Jonathan. Come on. He said, I'll never harm anybody in your house. Yes. That's right. There's some covenants that David has with Jonathan. Yes. And there's going to be preservation for some. Amen. There are souls in churches. There are souls in government. There are souls in, in leadership. There are souls that are ruling businesses. There are souls that are ruling multi-million, billion dollar companies that are about to be demoted and Davids are going to come in. And so God is talking to Saul. God is talking to, see, God is talking to Pharaoh. Yes. But he can't understand his voice. So he's tormented. Yes. That's where you come in. That's where you come in. You've been through the pit. You've been through Potiphar's house. You've been through the prison. And now God's about to raise you. I need you to close your hands, eyes real quickly. I want to pray for you. Written by Terry Young, Fresh Bread from Heaven's Bakery brings you a fresh, invigorating view of stories that were inspired of God and penned by scribes of ancient times. Gather together and do a book called The Bible. You will get some nuggets of truth as you read Fresh Bread from Heaven's Bakery, which will shatter what the church has taught you by what you have read and found on the internet. Draw your own conclusions, believe what you will, but one thing for sure, Fresh Bread from Heaven's Bakery will provide you with truths. So order your copy today from Amazon.com or from www.theorygiftbaskets.com.